brand new function in Excel allows you to generate an image out of a web link. So if I write equals image, and I point to this, and that will actually convert it into an image. And this lives inside the cell as opposed to other annoying images that we've had in the past that you need to move around. And one of the best use cases I've found for it is a QR code generator. So we have written the formula already. If I drag it down, then it creates a QR code for absolutely any website. My YouTube, my Twitter, my LinkedIn. Well, I can drag it further and then it will not have anything. But the moment that I put in any URL here, so www.google.com, enter, then it will generate a QR code. Sometimes it gives you this blocked error. I'll show you how to deal with that in a little bit as well. My name is David and I have tons of videos on Excel, Google Sheets, PowerPoint, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering on my channel. I love talking about the new stuff such as this image function. So there is actually a Google API that is able to convert a URL into a chart. And specifically here, if I say CHT equals QR, then it will convert it to a QR code. And then I link it to the cell. And that's what this and symbol is. And then A4 is where it's linked to. So um, let's uh, look at this together. So I'm not going to write it from scratch, but I'm going to start there. So if I write this one, then you need to start and end any text in speech marks. And then to go from text into a cell, use the ampersand key. And I say, and that one, which is the cell. If I click on it, then it'll open up the URL. Then I can close my brackets for the image function. Uh, obviously write the equals before, and it will generate that QR code. So that's how you do it. Now. I can drag it down like any other formula. Now, if it, it will give me the error like this if there's nothing there, but it will work if I add in a thing. But that's why I have the first part, which is if, if is blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say equals for image if is blank, this cell, close my brackets, value if true, I'm going to say speech marks, speech marks, which is blank. Otherwise, return that. And then at the end, I need to close my brackets a second time. And now I can just drag it down and it will show me blanks instead of the block thing. So I can then copy this and paste it here. And it will now generate it based on this website. And by the way, if you haven't explored this, then I have another video talking about it. Because it's a really, really cool way to get people to choose when they want to have a meeting with you. So what kind of meeting when you're available, it syncs to your live calendar. I just released a video on this a couple of weeks ago. Great. So this is how you can do a QR code and I will put the formula in the description below. Now let's go to the next one. So here I have heroes. So kind of like Iron Man that we had before, we have some other heroes as well. And we are here using equals image. Now, uh, there are some other inputs into it as well, but first let's look at how this works with formulas. This is uh, Natasha and her cost is, is five and this one should be eight. So if I write equals the lookup, lookup value is this one, comma, table array is going to be start there, F4 to lock that in, column index number is two, range lookup is zero. That will give me five and the next one will be eight if I drag it down like that. Yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Note that VLOOKUP cannot aggregate. It can only give you the first value. But total sales, I can use a sum ifs, and some range will be of this one, F4 to lock that in. Criteria range will be this one, F4 to lock that in, and then criteria will be this one. So you can actually use this with images, and it does work pretty well. So that's all very well and good. Well, what about pivot tables? If I go to insert pivot table, and I choose an existing worksheet over here. Then I'm going to say image. This will not work. It will just put image like that. But what I can do is I can go a little bit further and I can say image with alt text. And I can say equals image. And then my source is going to be that one. Note that that is my only input that I need. All the others are square brackets. So I'm going to click on that and then Alt text is going to be this one. So that's the name of the person. Although I could type it in if I wanted to in speech box as well. And then sizing, you get these other options as well. So uh, fit cell, 
fill cell, original size or custom size. So let's go for a custom size there. And if you do custom size, then you can specify the height and the width. So it could be, for example, seven by 12, enter, and that's going to be really, really small. Let's try 700 by 1200. Now it's going to be absolutely massive like that. So you can specify that, or you can do as well, original size, for example, and that will also be absolutely huge. You can just drag it across there and you'll see it. But if I do the other one, which is fill, so number one, then it will fill it across the cell and make it stretch if needed. So I usually try and avoid stretching images or because it just makes them look kind of silly, but you can do it like that if you want to. But because we did the old text, watch this, I can drag it down and then yeah, it is kind of stretched, which is annoying. But if I now make a pivot table out of this, insert pivot table, existing worksheet over here, and I choose image with all text, now it will actually just give the name. So that's a little bit more useful, but it won't be able to give you the image in the pivot table, which is a bit annoying. You are though able to copy and paste values. So if I take these, for example, and I copy and paste them, this will give me an error because that is an image. But if I paste values, so paste special and values, then it will just give me the image, which is kind of nice. It's converted it from a formula into a static image. Show you some more things. So if I add some filters, the data tab filter, then you don't see them there, but the alt text, you see it there. But if I go to image, it just shows it to me like that. So alt text is definitely encouraged. However, if you do filter it, then it will show you the image as you expect. So let me remove these filters. Uh, you do get this symbol. I'll talk about what that is later on in this video. So I'm going to remove the filter, control shift L. So what other things? Let's try data validation. So drop down list. So if I go to select these cells and then data validation on the data tab and allow a list, I'm going to again choose, uh, we only need the unique ones. So let's just choose these ones, press enter. Then it shows me the name, again, the old text. It doesn't show me the actual image. What about slices? So if I right click on this and choose add a slicer, again, it also shows me just the old text. So those are things to be aware of. Another issue is things that you need to authenticate like this. So you'll often see this blocked error when uh, you need to authenticate to get to this. So if it's stored on OneDrive, SharePoint, or Google Drive, then it will show you this blocked image. However, it actually shows it to you often even when it's not blocked. So these, I can assure you, are actually fully open images. They are shared with the world. So here, this is the link of this last one that I did. It's on Google Drive, and all of these are also authenticated images. Uh, but actually, even though they are authenticated for me to get there. I can actually do this on a private browser and it will still work because these are shared publicly. So uh, if you go to, for example, share, then I can show you that this is shared for anyone with a link. So it should work. I shouldn't need to authenticate to get this, but it doesn't work annoyingly. So I would say that the use case of the image function is kind of a little bit subdued by the fact that it thinks you need to authenticate a lot of the things that you don't. Let's go back to my QR codes here and uh, I have the formula already in this. So if I go to www.google.com, it does actually sometimes give me this blocked error. From my experience, sometimes this gets fixed with something as easy as copy and go to a new workbook and then paste. Press okay, you will get that when you copy and paste. And look, this is google.com, it is working just fine. So sometimes the blocked errors will fix that way. So let's go to another example of that. So here I have like a flag URL. And if I go to equals image dot, and then this one, close my brackets, then it shows me blocked. Actually, these are not blocked at all. These are accessible by everyone. I've used these same images inside Power BI, dashboards inside Google Sheets image function, which is virtually the same as Excel. So Excel is much more conservative when it thinks things are blocked. However, if you do want to get images of flags, then what you can do is convert your countries to data types. And then if you click on it, it will show you the flag. You can actually extract that into your worksheet. So let me show you how to do that. So first I'm going to just uh, copy these cells and then 
paste them here, and I'm going to actually go to data type and convert to text. So this is how they are, just by writing the name of a country or something like that. Then if you go to the data tab, you have the geography feature. This is available in Excel for Office 365 or Excel online, kind of like the image function is. So there you go, now it's converted them, it has this symbol. This kind of thing also can work with stocks, currencies, or all other data from inside your organization you can set it up for. So let's go to Austria, for example. There's the flag, and there's some other cool stuff here. So the area of the country, the GDP, and some more obscure stuff like the CO2 emissions, the forested area. And if you ever want to extract something, you can press that and it will extract it. Or you can even select your entire column and extract it like this. So let's say the fertility rates like that. Or you can do that with the image as well. So the image will be the flag. The third way you can extract something is equals the cell, and then you put a dot, and then you do image. And then you press enter, and it will extract the flag. Now, if I drag this down, it will not work for all of them. It will give you this field error if it doesn't work. I used to use this all the time, and it worked really seamlessly until fairly recently for every single country. But now it does give me this field error for a lot of them. So it's not as nice as I would have imagined. Now, you will notice that if I go back to some of my images that I've got here, I do have this same symbol. And I, if I click on it, I just get this, where I can just get the ability to extract something, but just gives me this field thing because it doesn't really work. And equally, I can also press equals this and then press a dot. And then you can get either this one or this one. That will be just the cell. If I do a dot and I get this one, it will also give me the field error. So it's a little bit buggy at the time being, but essentially this is the same technology that lives behind the image function is the one that lives behind the geography and the other things as well, which is the linked data type. All right, so what do you do if you don't have Microsoft 365 Excel? So if you don't have that, then what you'll need to do is you'll need to open this up in Excel online. So if you turn on auto save, then you go to file and then you go to info then you get open file location. Now you get it in two places here and here. This one will actually open it up in your local Windows Explorer, whereas the lower one will open it up online. So here is online and I can go into the file and this will open it up in Excel online. So here I have this warning and I can say turn on images and it will actually turn on the images as you can see there and I can get to them. So all of the features that I've shown you, both the geography data types as well as the image function are available in the free version of Excel online. So the free version of Excel online is getting a lot of features fast. For example, I've just noticed this data from picture today, which allows you to convert a photo of something into actual data. I have a video that I just released on it a few weeks ago because it's brand new to Excel desktop as well, but it's a great, great functionality. So check that video out if you like. So once we have it like this, you can see that my other image is are still going strong there. And to show you, you can press in a cell equals image. Note that you have more information about how to do it in Excel online than you do in Excel desktop. And then I click on a URL, close my brackets, and it will show it to me just like it did there. I have all the same other inputs that I want to. So the old text, other things like that, etc. So you can get to the images via Excel online. Now, if you go to uh, SharePoint, these ones will show me field instead of the blocked thing. And these ones don't work as well. However, if you do just want to get all the flags, then what you can do is you can just copy and paste into Google Sheets. Because <laughs> Google Sheets also has image function. There we go. And then if I write here equals image and click on the cell, then it will have the flag and I can drag this down. Or if I want to get the faster, I can use some shortcuts and control D to fill that down. Also work with Excel. There you go. Now I have the flag of pretty much everything, which is nice. Know that in Google, it does work inside a pivot table. However, it doesn't work inside a slicer or data validation. And because you don't have the alt text as an input, it's actually more limited with things like data validation or like filters and things like that. 
So yeah, that's something to note. And of course, QR codes works exactly the same in Excel as it does in Google Sheets. In fact, I've been using it in Google Sheets for years before Excel launched the image function. So my name is David Benayman. And if you enjoyed this video, then I've got plenty more on Excel, PowerPoint, Power BI, Zoom, Teams, Google Sheets. If you like using Tech of the Workplace, then I'm covering on my channel. So subscribe and like this video if you want to see more. Thanks for watching.